The Swiss financial world views ex-banker turned whistleblower Rudolf Elmer as an enemy. The damage inflicted on society here doesn't just affect a few people. It affects all of civil society. It affects my daughter's generation too. For myself, I think it's important to have the courage to stand up for what's right. Elmer was once part of this system as a former employee of Swiss bank Julius Baer, first in Zurich, then in the Cayman Islands, a known tax haven. In the Caymans, he realized his bank was helping clients evade taxes and launder money on a massive scale. I had to submit confirmations that purchases and sales were commissioned in the Caymans when they had already been arranged in Zurich. That wasn't right. And in addition, we had clients who were outright criminals, like Arturo Acosta Chaparro, a Mexican police officer who had been convicted of money laundering and murder. Elmer was sacked when he began asking questions. He passed on information to Swiss authorities. And in 2008, to the whistleblowing platform WikiLeaks, he made a public appearance with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange in 2011. The public prosecutor had all the data and did nothing with it. What I want to do is to hand this over to WikiLeaks. The issue became world-renowned when WikiLeaks published it. For a decade, Elmer has been fighting his own personal battle against an extremely powerful system. He's happy to talk with journalists because public pressure is his only weapon. In spite of his revelations, it's still business as usual in Switzerland. My case is one of the ones the criminal justice system won't investigate for political reasons. What would become of Switzerland if they started litigation against the likes of Julius Baer, Credit Suisse or UBS? That would call the entire financial community into question. But pressure was applied from abroad, mainly by the US. Revelations of dubious offshore dealings ended Switzerland's legendary banking secrecy. The entire rationale for people putting their money into Swiss banks was the anonymity that was possible there. Banking secrecy ensured legally protected anonymity. So naturally, when lists of names were published, that was a shot to the heart of this system. Elmer has paid a heavy price for exposing his bank's dirty dealings. He spent 220 days in jail, and prosecutors demanded he undergo psychological assessments. His daughter was also traumatized by the ordeal. What does he hope to achieve? It would be great if society realized that perpetrators of tax evasion and tax fraud are thieves. That's probably the only punishment which will be really effective in the future, sending people to prison for defrauding the state or the general public. Rudolf Elmer says many of those perpetrators are employed by banks around the globe. As a whistleblower, he's trying to bring transparency to the secretive world of banking. It's his only hope of changing the system.